Hello everyone, this is Annalie. Welcome back to CNA Review. Uh, in this video, um, I will continue to discuss the role and responsibilities of the support worker. Uh, we're still on chapter one of the Canadian textbook for the support worker. So let's begin um, by, let's continue with uh, part two of chapter one. Uh, let's begin by answering few of the review questions. Um, choose the best answer. Uh, number one, support workers can advocate for their clients by A, never leaving their client's side, B, by providing empathetic care, C, acting appropriately at all times, and D, speaking or acting on behalf of the client when necessary. Review question two, true or false, Canada has a uniform educational program for the support worker across Canada. Next review question, choose the best answer. The ultimate goal of support work is to blank the client's quality of life. A, modify, B, improve, C, decrease, and D, assist. If you know the answer, please write down in the chat box below or write down on the comment section below. Six categories of support worker responsibility. One is personal care. Two is support for nurses and other healthcare providers. Three is family support. Four is social support. Five is housekeeping and home management. And six is documenting and reporting any basic assessments, observations, and care provided in the client's record or chart. Now, one of the responsibilities of the support worker when working in a facility-based setting is to assist the client with the activities of daily living. Activities of daily living, or otherwise known as ADLs, are tasks or activities that a person will normally do on a day-to-day -day basis as self-care. Example of this is eating, bathing, grooming, dressing, and toileting. Toileting can be bowel elimination or bladder elimination. Now, some clients are no longer capable of doing this by himself, and they need the support of uh, the assistance of the support worker. Some of them are able to do partial of the partial of the activi activities, while some needs um, more extensive or intensive care, extensive care by the support worker. Example of this is uh, uh, changing the incontinence brief or the incontinence product of the client, uh, providing bath or shower to the client. When the support worker works in the community, they do both the activities of daily living and the instrumental activities of daily living are also known as IADLs. So the IADL are um, complex tasks or complex skills that a person needs to have in order to survive or to be successful, to live independently in the community. Example is filling up their prescription or um, uh, making sure that their prescription are delivered to them. Next is booking for transportation and appointments, a medical appointment or a diagnostic appointment. Um, next is assist with the client with the electronic devices and the use of telephones and cell phones. Maybe the client wants to communicate with family members or friends uh, who are away from them. They help with grocery shopping and uh, they help with uh, basic home maintenance. When we say basic home maintenance, um, this one example of basic home maintenance is to ensure that the electric appliances are in good repair. The electric appliances in the client's home are in good or are repair. They check the water supply in the bathroom. They might want to make sure that the bathroom water temperature is within the acceptable range. Um, the shoes are checked daily and making sure that they are fitting well in good repair and they're not a trip hazard to the client. Uh, they make sure that the garbage is out for pickup on scheduled dates for pickup. And if the client has medical or home fall alert but, uh, buttons, uh, they make sure that these alert buttons are working well. The home lights are functioning well. 
and um, there are no clutter inside the house. So when an individual loses his capacity to make decisions or he's no longer um, legally capable of deciding for himself, um, the primary contact or the legally enacted person or appointed person is the one who make decision for the client. Now, this uh, primary contact or legally appointed person, uh, he can be a family member or a representative from the government agency. Now, they decide for the client's um, health, uh, stat, uh, health uh, status, for instance, they decide where the client will live, what type of care that the client will receive, and who will care for the cl client. Now, the nurses are in charge uh, to manage the physical needs and to monitor the health status of the client. They assess the, the client or the patient for potential health problems, and they provide interventions and communicate these interventions by creating a care plan. Now, the support worker executes or provide care and assistance based on what the, uh, is indicated in the care plan. Uh, they do not decide for the client. Instead, they are responsible to report any physical or behavioral changes that may occur on the client. Example of physical changes, uh, sudden um, weakness of the arm or leg, um, uh, weak vision, um, pain, and an example of behavioral changes are when the client is disoriented, when the client is confused, when you ask one question, he will give you a different answer, or when the client is easily angered or easily irritated. So those are example of uh, behavioral changes. Next responsibility of the support worker is to support for nurses and other healthcare providers by cleaning and sanitizing the equipment uh, if they work in the hospital or other uh, facility-based settings. An example of equipments are um, transfer devices, weighing scale, thermometer, and glucometer. Now, when the support worker finds out that uh, the equipment is broken or the equipment is not functioning well, they have to make sure that they have to report uh, this observation this um, uh, Im observation immediately and to post a sign, a do not use sign or a broken equipment sign on the equipment. Uh, this is to prevent other healthcare providers or other healthcare workers from using the equipment. Um, Otherwise, it would be very unsafe to use a broken equipment on a patient or on a client. Next is uh, measure and report vital signs. The nurses can delegate the support workers to measure and report vital signs. Example of vital signs is blood pressure, body temperature, pulse, pulse rate, uh, heart rate, um, oxygen saturation. They may also apply heat and cold compress on the client's affected site for uh, heat and cold compress will um, reduce, may reduce uh, swelling or may reduce pain and also lower the body temperature of the client. They help nurses or assist nurses with oxygen therapy by making sure that the cannula is in the right place. It, the tubing is connected to the oxygen tank or the oxygen concentrator is connected to the power supply. Um, they ensure that the tank is not empty. The oxygen in use sign is posted outside the door of the client and inside the client's room. Uh, they want to make sure that nobody will smoke around or near the area of the patient or the client. And because the oxygen has the potential to ignite fire when exposed to flammable materials. Another support that support workers can provide to nurses and other healthcare providers is to provide range of motion exercises or ROM. ROM, these are movement of a given joint in a specific direction. For instance, moving your arms away and towards you or bending your arms towards your, sh your shoulder. 
So those are examples of range of motion exercises. And when can the support worker uh, perform this? Uh, one is during dressing the client while, while helping the client dress up and while providing shower to the client. The support workers can be the eyes and ears of the nurses and other healthcare providers. In some uh, uh, work setting, um, the support worker spends most of the time, more time with the clients and the residents. So they have more opportunity to observe for any changes, for any physical and behavioral changes that may uh, uh, occur on the client. And this observation has to be reported immediately. Next is family support. In the facility, if there's a new admission, the support worker will help the client and the families unpack their personal belongings and settle in. They also help them uh, familiarize in, in the layout, in the, the unit's layout. Uh, they will teach, uh, uh, they, will familiar, uh, they will help the families familiarize, with, familiarize with where the kitchen is or where is the snack counter is and the times that the snacks or the food uh, is delivered. In the um, private homes, they also help family prepare food and do household chores. They help with childcare. Uh, some family members are the primary caregiver of the client and they need help to transfer and mobilize client. And this is where the support worker will come in and help the, the primary caregiver of the client. They also give the, the family caregiver a break from their duties. Uh, maybe they can come twice a week to, to give them a break, to relieve them from their work. Or the support worker will, can come overnight and stay to help um, take care of the client overnight. Next is social support. Uh, social support um, example is recreation. Recreational activities is uh, uh, believed to, to help um, reduce uh, depression, isolation, and also stress. Now support worker can help clients participate in social activities. Sometimes they organize uh, parties, for example, birthday parties, um, St. Saint Saint Patrick's uh, Day party or Valentine's Day party or even Christmas party in the facility. Sometimes they go to the community and uh, attend uh, social activities in the community. They organize games and outings. They organize games that are... Um, relevant to the client and uh, games that are based on the abilities of the cl client to participate. They also go to outings. They provide joy, enjoyment, recreation, and opportunity to meet old and new friends. Sometimes the recreation that the support worker can invite performers in the facility to perform in the singing, to do sing along uh, uh, for the clients and to do uh, other stuff like drawing or games. They also support and guide clients who live independently by supporting their cooking skills, house cleaning, and uh, to shop for themselves. Next is housekeeping and home management. In the facility setting, housekeeping includes bed making, meal delivery. Some clients has preferences or prefers to um, eat their breakfast inside the room rather than joining the group in the dining hall. And the support worker can um, deliver this meal inside the room. Uh, some clients or some uh, patients are too weak to, or too unwell to go to the dining area to eat with the group. So they, they want their meals delivered in the room. Um, support worker tidy, tidy up living areas, making sure that uh, there's, it's clutter free and no trip hazard in the area. They maintain supplies. Example of supplies are gowns, bed linens, towels, um, shampoo, uh, incontinence product, ostomy supplies, um, lotions, and barrier creams. In the private setting, the support worker can assist with the IADL, example like housekeeping, vacuuming, tidying up living room, bedroom, toilet, and kitchen area. They do the laundry as well as preparing nutritious meals. 
documenting and reporting. All healthcare workers are legally responsible to report and record any client care they provide, including observations noted during the care. Example is unusual pain, changes in speech, um, difficulty walking, uh, loss of appetite, or the client or the patient refuse to eat, skin rashes, um, abrasions, or skin discolorations may suggest trauma. Uh, nasal or eye discharge may suggest infection, uh, constipation, and diarrhea. These are examples of uh, observations that should be included, should be reported immediately. Now, documentation can be in written or electronic format, um, but it all depends on the uh, policy of the agency. But most of the agencies nowadays in Canada, most of the facilities are now transitioning to electronic format of uh, type of uh, documentation. Who are the people who receive support services? A client is the term used for a person receiving care to support or support services in the community. It is also a general term for all people who receive care, health care, and support services. When the client is receiving care in the hospital, he is co called a patient. A, a, when a client is receiving care in a residential facility, he's called a resident. Now, each one is unique. No two people hold the same personality. We need to treat our clients with dignity and respect. Um, we, we have different needs and different abilities, and same with our clients. Um, they have unique life experiences and unique situations and cultures. They came from different cultural backgrounds and heritage. They, their desires and opinions are different. So we need to respect them by honoring their wishes and their preferences. Uh, we have to include them in, in our planning. And when giving care, we don't treat them like a, an object, but we treat them like a person. Groups of clients receiving care, one is older persons oh, because of body changes, um, maybe physical limitation or a decline in cognitive decline or a visual, visual impairment. Um, example of this is assistance with medications, application of compression stockings or hair trimming or nail trimming. Um, next is people with disabilities can be due to illness or congenital um, abnormalities. Next is people with medical issues, those who were um, infected by COVID-19 and are suffering from the, from the long-term effect of the COVID. Uh, next, people with stroke, people with multiple sclerosis, cancer patients, people who had uh, kidney disease or uh, lung disease. Next is people who had surgery. Um, surgery can um, I mean, people who had surgery may have difficulty in ambulating and they need the support of the support worker to help them out. They need, uh, uh, the support worker can provide comfort to relieve pain. They also may assist in emptying the surgical drains if there's any and to empty fully catheter drains if there's any. Next, people with mental health problems, um, symptoms can range from mild to, to severe and they need someone to help them out. So for milder people, maybe they just need cueing, they just need a reminding to do their uh, the, um, activities of daily living. Next, people needing rehabilitation. These are clients who need assistance to regain functions lost due to surgery. Example of surgery is uh, hand surgery or um, hip surgery or knee surgery or other types of surgeries. Now, children also needs the support of the, children need the support of the uh, support worker in the hospitals and at home. Uh, mothers and newborns, uh, new mothers um, are, needs to recover from their, uh, from their, uh, from giving birth. Uh, complications can take up to six to eight weeks after birth. Example of these, examples of these complications are excessive bleeding and uh, infection. Next is people requiring special care. Uh, these are people in the burned units, 
uh, who receive dialysis in the urgent care units or in the emergency unit.